We'll start with Ohio State in uh, Iowa. Um, this is a game, like I said, Ohio State, especially offensively, started off really slow. Give you the first half drives here. You have a field goal on the first one, and that's coming off of a short field as well. Um, Ohio State took 60% of their snaps in Iowa territory, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but you start off with the field goal, then you have a fumble for Ohio State. That was returned for a touchdown uh, when Iowa's way. And then a touchdown, a field goal, a field goal, a punt, and a field goal. Then you mm -hmm. come out in the second half. Ohio State started off with an interception, and then they punted. And then that offense started to click. You get four straight touchdown drives. Um, what do you make of that type of offensive performance where – you know this is a great offense going up against, again, one of the best defenses in the nation, and they just can't finish off drives to start it off. Yeah, I think this was, this was the first test. And people who I've talked to, I've heard Ohio State hasn't played anybody. Ohio State hasn't played anybody. Ohio State hasn't played anybody, right? And I think this was their really true first, outside of the Notre Dame game since then, test of a, of a defense that could present issues for them in some way, shape, or form. Um. I, it's so tough because I made I tried to make this argument last night on our show. I'm not concerned about Ryan Day in the offense, and I know that it's hard to say that because people are like, "Well, you are what you've showed me. You are you, you are who you were your last game. That's how, that's how you're going to be judged. That's how you're going to be identified by." But I feel like Ohio State has done such a great job over the past, really, and I've I said this 20 years, but we'll just say five or six, seven years now, going back to when you and I were there of having offensive production, no matter who's playing quarterback, no matter who's out there, they just, their system plays really well and they, they find a way to put players in really good positions to be successful. With that being said, I, want, I do want to give a tip of the cap to Iowa's defense for slowing <clears> them <throat> down, but it's one of those things where if it, that offense has so much pressure and now you have a defense that's actually helping them out as well, that it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, it's, it's a crack in the dam. And once they find that crack in the dam, the, the pressure starts applying and it's going to bust, whether that's in the third, fourth quarter, first or second quarter, it's good. It's coming at some at some point in time. And I just think it's really hard to slow them down. So for me, it, it, yeah, it's a little concerning, but I thought it was really good for them heading into a a, a, a really, uh, to me, defining matchup against Penn State this weekend, because um, I think you're going to learn a lot about both these teams. Uh, and obviously, Michigan has already set the precedent with a Penn State team um, and what they did to them up in the big house. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll be interesting to see how Ohio State answers that bill. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm totally with you spinning it forward. Like their their big test is going to be this week, and it's not to say that Iowa wasn't a test. I think it was for Ohio State's offense. Um, but you know, I mean, Iowa on offense was, I mean, they're absolute yeah. dog shit. In, in I don't even game. talk about that anymore. I don't even yeah. talk about it anymore. <laughs> I, I, I'm low key there with you. Um, yeah. But to me, it's it's very interesting because you know there were people who did not watch that game and they would look at the box score and be like, wow, Ohio State was dominant. And then there are people who watch that game who are, um, you know, they're not Ohio State fans who will try to tell you that this was a bad game for Ohio State. And while I will say that this was not their sharpest football game ever, um, the, the last time a team put up this many points against Iowa, I was 18 months old. Mm -hmm. Iowa had given up five touchdowns on defense all year long, Ohio State scored five touchdowns in that football game. This was an Iowa team that was giving up less than 10 points per game. Ohio State's offense scored 47. They had a defensive touchdown in there as well. This was a thorough performance once Ohio State started clicking. And the fact that they were able to weather the storm and to get more chances at moving the football, to me, really stands out. So, um, I thought it was good for them to feel resistance. I thought CJ Stroud looked very average at some points in that game um, until he really started clicking. I think it was good for him to look like that. It felt like it was too easy for much of the season. Um, I am a fan of these types of performances because as a player, I knew my coaches were going to get on me and they were going to coach us extremely hard because we got such a convincing win and it was still not great. It, it was a complete win though. Like you said, I mean, you, you won with all three phases, which Ohio State couldn't do last year. They could not. No, they, they could not they do that last year. They couldn't. Totally so, agree with you. It's just always it's, – it's very, very funny to me because Ohio State gets so much praise and so much hype. Like, I don't think we'd be having this conversation if 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 Tennessee um, drums Georgia this way or something. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just – and I get it. It's, it. That's like comparing apples to oranges with Iowa, but it's like – if you go out and drum a team that you're supposed to drum, like 
how how you do yeah. it, it doesn't really matter. There's still 54 points on the board, and they only had 10. Like, yeah, it, it's 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 an interesting thing, and and I get comments from Ohio State fans on Twitter and, and uh, just the way that we cover them on Big Ten Network, and people are like, you know, uh, I don't know why you guys are so negative or so critical or whatever the case is, and. My response is I wouldn't call it negativity. I wouldn't call it being critical. I think the bar is so high for Ohio State that like we're going to nitpick the way that they put 54 up like that's that's where they are as a program. They're in the squarely in the national conversation every year when you have built that standard like we have to talk about you differently. And and that's just what it is. And Mm -hmm. like I think Michigan's starting to get to that point, too, as a program where. We're we're not just satisfied with the fact that they're winning football games. We're kind of we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of how and why they won and where maybe they fell short in a victory. Like I, I think it's a great place to be as a program. No doubt. Um, real yeah. quick, I just want to talk about what Ohio State did defensively. We don't have to talk about Iowa's offense here, but mm-hmm. Ohio State, they limited Iowa to one of 13 on third downs. They took the ball away six times, which is wild. Iowa's average third down distance to go was 8.9 yards, 8.9 yards. And they ran 85% of their plays in their own territory. They barely crossed the 50-yard line all game long. This was a dominant performance from Ohio State's defense. And I don't give a damn what you think about Iowa's offense. They had 156 total yards. They could not convert third downs. They could not cross the 50-yard line. Ohio State took the football away six times in that game. Iowa had turned it over six times total during the season, this was a bad offense, and Ohio State made them look like a very bad offense. Yeah, it's suffocating. Um, those numbers are interesting too. I mean, third and third and nine basically all day long, dude. Oh my gosh. I mean, hack, what are you calling? Who was the fucking call? Well, especially with Iowa, I don't I don't really know, dude. Like, what the fuck? What do you who who's who's gonna win for me? What are you gonna do? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see it, you know. Um they have a hard enough time throwing it on first and ten, let alone third and nine. 